So it's a very exciting time for the Hong Kong startup scene now. And we are very honored to have three very interesting companies here with us today. So firstly, we have Passkit, Insight Robotics, and last but not least, 3 Doodle. So we'll first invite them to each do a sharing. And then after that, there will be a panel discussion where you can all ask questions no more. So we will now invite Ms. Uh, Paul. Sorry. Yeah, you can Paul. Call this fine. CEO of the Hong Kong office of Passkit, uh, the digital wallet solution company. So, Passkit has customers uh, including Apple, Aeroflot, Azure well Airways, Resort World, and Subway. So, he will talk about how technology, knowledge, passion, and approach allows business to efficiently implement scalable, sustainable mobile wallet solutions, and hence uh, securing long term value and the competitive edge. So, wow, you did well. You revised that site. Nice. So, uh, we may not invite. Thank you very much. Well, firstly, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for the invite. Thank you to Sterling, and thank you to everyone that's helped coordinate it. It's a pleasure to see people here uh, that's excited about the opportunity to create value for the world uh, through technology, create value through the world through entrepreneurship. Um, how many people in here had heard of Passkit prior to the, uh, the announcement going out? A couple of people? All right, well, hopefully we can resolve that today. We've just been named uh, one of the startups to watch in Hong Kong by Founders Grid. So we were in the top 50 Hong Kong startups to watch. So I do want to share with you how did we get to that position uh, and indeed where are we heading going forward from that great position. So the, the key outcomes I'd like to achieve is I'd like you to know a bit about me. Not that I'm egotistical, but I think it would be useful for you to know a little bit about my background. I want you to know about Passkit. I want you to know how we started and how we've grown. Um, and I want you to know what, it's take, what it takes you to be ultra successful. Um, now we're constantly learning and maybe without any ego, we would say we're super successful. We're not Uber yet, we're not Google, we're not Facebook. But we're certainly on a trajectory for success Every day we get a great reward from the market, our clients and investors, around what it feels like to be successful. So we're going to try and share and hopefully give some lessons around you know, what, it, what it takes to be successful. I want you to feel inspired. I want you to feel inspired to create value, whatever that is, whether that's with Passkit, whether that's with your own entrepreneurial ideas, whether it's as you move into uh, the workforce out of the university. I want to I want you to feel what it could be like working for Passkit. Actually, I want, I want to share what it could feel like working for a startup, or indeed starting your own startup, what it could feel like. I want you to think about what's right for you, and what's right for you right now. And I want you to find out some more about Passkit, if there's something interesting. And I want you to take action. I'd like you to tell others, take action. Maybe come and talk to me, come and talk to my team. Maybe apply to, to, to be part of Passkit. Talk to me more about creating value yourself and what it really takes. We're only going to be able to cover a certain amount in the certain time that we have. So let, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about me. There I am, just in case you didn't recognize. Um, so I've actually been in Hong Kong 10 years. I have uh, three kids, uh, four kids, three cats, one wife, uh, and a number of businesses. So this is kind of, kind of me. Um, my wife is very pleased that it is only one wife, so you can see it's a picture of her. And, I'm, and I've had, I've created and maintained a lot of businesses at this point in time. Now, Passkit is going to be the business I talk about, and really it's the business that I'm focusing 150% of my time. Um, I'm also a part-time rock star. Um, I do perform on stage, as you might have seen me perform in backstage, you may have seen me perform in uh, The Wunch, you may have seen me perform in other places. So for people who enjoy music, come and talk to me about how you can combine starting companies and still have a great passion around other hobbies as well. So I'm not, I'm not sort of rock star famous, but I'm a wannabe rock star famous, and the same as, as being a business entrepreneur. Okay, a little bit about, about my background then. So that's about sort of my situation. A bit about my background. Um, I studied mechanical engineering and I also followed up with an MBA while I was working. And I worked for the first sort of 15 years of my postgraduate career for a number of multinational companies. Um, frankly, it was a great experience, but I was a frustrated entrepreneur. Um, a frustrated entrepreneur working within some great organizations. 
The great thing that came out of that, though, is I travelled the world. I lived in five countries, built some great products, made some, met some awesome people, built a great network, uh, and deployed great scalable processes under a corporate environment. So on a salary, it was quite nice getting a salary. That's one thing you do miss occasionally as an entrepreneur, as I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about. So a little bit about me, and that's, that's enough about me, because I'm sure that's more than enough about personality. What I do want to talk about is Passkit. So this is my latest venture. Passkit we founded on the 12th of June. We are a global business. A lot of people say, so how are your clients in Hong Kong, blah, 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 do you have any dreams of moving outside Hong Kong? From the day one, we were having global clients and global businesses coming to use Passkit. And actually, Hong Kong made us a very powerful proposition. Um, I think when we first started, I got so many offers to move this to Silicon Valley. But part of my personality is I'm quite obstinate. And I said, no, I'm going to make it work here. I've got some kids here, my wife likes it here, I really like Hong Kong. And of course, I can see this massive opportunity across, uh, across Asia, particularly some of the emerging economies, which I'll talk a little bit about. We are headquartered in Hong Kong. Um, actually, one of the guys is going to talk, I'm not sure I see him here, the three dude guys have just moved into the same office. Uh, we're on the sixth floor of Golden Sun Centre in Bonham Strand West, so not very far away from here. I've just acquired the whole of the third floor. Uh, so I'm refitting an office out here. So our headquarters is in Hong Kong, but you'll see later on the slides we've got partners and clients across the world, and indeed we have some employees in different locations as well. Well, I self-seeded this. One of the benefits of working for a corporate and latterly working in investment banking is rather than go and spend and buy nice Ferraris, I actually started to build technology and use money to start to seed this business. And I'll talk about how I learned what I particularly did to see that business. Uh, we secured Series A, and you know, please chip in if any of these terms aren't familiar, but within startup world, uh, as you raise capital, you go through different series of raising capital. We raised 2.1 million in our Series A, and I'm just going through a Series B, which should conclude in June 2015, which is between five to 10 million. This is not common knowledge. So please don't go and advertise that. But it's around about the five to ten million mark um, with a certain valuation, which is not market public available yet. All right, so that's a bit about Passkit. You're probably wondering, well, what the hell does Passkit do? Now, Passkit's a very broad kit to allow companies to engage through the mobile wallet. So what I thought I'd do is just show you a quick video, which kind of at a high level describes the purpose and value of Passkit. So hopefully we can. Um, if I go the right way, hopefully the video will Like many other people, you're on the road of maintaining a successful business. Like any other business, sometimes you don't have as many customers as you would like. So to solve this, you put a cutout coupon in the paper to attract consumers. Only thing is, with so many other businesses out there doing the same thing, trying to advertise and publish content, people feel overloaded with paper coupons, loyalty cards, and tickets. Where are they going to put all that? Nobody likes an overloaded wallet. So if they're not using their wallet, what's something that they could use instead that consumers don't leave the house without, they're super familiar with, and it's used by just about everyone? The solution is simple. Take the wallet and make it mobile. Introducing Passkit, the one-stop shop for creating, distributing, and managing mobile wallet content. We provide businesses with the tools to make their own engaging mobile wallet content. Check how easy it is with our past design. You start with a blank template, then you can make it any color you like, then add a title at the top, various fields of text in the middle, and a barcode if you're choosing at the bottom. It's fully customizable to meet any of your business needs. At our website, we have multiple pass templates available for editing such as transit passes, event tickets, and store value cards. Distributing is super easy done with emails, social media, even by SMS and scannable posters. It's easy to get your pass out into the world and ready to be used. Once distributed, the pass now acts as a one-way avenue of communication where you can send various relevant notifications directly to their phone to fully engage your customers. Redemption is as easy as scanning the code on the pass. Updates to the pass are applied immediately. 
check how your pass is doing. We have an analytics page on our website to check certain KPIs, campaign success, and consumer behavior. Let's review. First you create, then distribute, send notifications, have value redemption, and track usage. The cycle keeps going on. Whether you're a business owner, marketer, or large agency, Pasty provides all the tools you need to deliver engaging mobile wallet content to your consumer. Plus, our custom API can be fully integrated with any of your existing systems. And by no means is Pasty a static company. As the Internet of Things evolve and new connected technologies release, such as smartwatches and wearables, we are constantly innovating new ways to make the consumer experience even better. So if you're passionate, want to provide customer engagement in a sustainable way that's consumer friendly, want to kickstart a mobile campaign in a simple and innovative way, you've come to the right place. We're past it. Let's start working together and provide the world with the best mobile wallet experience today. So just a very high level side, uh, high level introduction, particularly this video is targeted to the business community and we have a whole range of different client segments which I can allude to a bit more maybe over, over questions, but I just want to give you a feel of the value that we're providing the world. Um, the other thing you can do, and I'm just going to hold it up briefly, is if you type that into your smartphone you will actually get my business card that you can store into your mobile wallet. So, I don't give out paper anymore because it's wasteful. I hate one. I hate waste. I hate paper. Right? It's just a wasteful thing. I have no way of communicating. So if you visit visited past.is forward slash Paul, uh, then you would have my business card stored in your mobile wallet. If you have an iPhone, that will store in Passbook. If you have um, uh, Google, unfortunately it's not available in Hong Kong, Google Wallet, you store it in Google Wallet. If you have a Samsung device with Samsung Wallet, you store it in Samsung Wallet. So you store it in the wallet that's built into your operating system. And if you don't have a wallet application, we provide a third party app that you can store all of that content. So a single wallet app that you can store all of these different digital pieces of value. Okay, so think of the opportunity. Every piece of paper that's in your wallet, every piece of membership card, loyalty card, tickets, maybe some of you have flown on Cafe Pacific and used a boarding pass that's stored in passport that you simply scan to transact rather than fumbling around with a, with a piece of paper. That's the opportunity to provide convenience for customers um, and value for the business through analytics and through much more powerful engagement through a smartphone. I think most people would say they go to bed with their smartphone and if you've got a boyfriend or girlfriend, you probably kiss them goodnight and then you kiss your phone goodnight after. So the smartphone really is something you're most intimate with uh, and we allow brands and agencies to tap into that intimate relationship that customers and consumers have with their smartphone. <clears throat> okay, so that's hopefully a bit of an introduction, and just given the time, I want to move on to um, how did we navigate this, this startup? Um, and we hold events for our partners and clients to learn how to best use and access mobile wallet technology and add value for consumers, add value for society. And I often use this picture because it's the, it's the Santa Maria. Does anyone know or remember their history classes? And if you might have needed to study American history, um, does anyone know what's, what the Santa Maria is? It's a ship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where the Santa Maria is found? Uh, it's the ship of service. Christopher Columbus was on that ship. And I use this as an analogy for what a startup is like. Because in those days, they didn't have maps, they didn't know where America's was. They set sail on a ship and they were going to find something, right? And I think the startup situation is very similar. So when we started on our Santa Maria, we were out to build a scalable, affordable, cloud-based push technology capability. This was before Apple had announced Passport when there were third-party wallet apps out there, but not really having the capability to deliver value to their customers. So we built a scalable, affordable, cloud-based push technology capability based off our experiences. I designed hsbc.com, based off my understanding of cloud. We were playing with Amazon Web Servers. I know we've got 
uh, some technologists in here. Anyone play with AWS as a cloud? So we were using AWS and actually starting to leverage capabilities. What we found that wasn't being done very well is to build lean processes into a cloud-based system. So that's where we started. So oh, this is pretty cool. And we were trying to figure out, well, what's, you know, what's the business value? First, the first rule of the journey work, though, was we saw another island. And have you heard the term pivot, pivoting in business? Now, this pivot happened on the day that Apple announced Passbook to its developer community. So we went to WWDC, uh, the Worldwide Development Conference, in 2012, and Apple announced that Passbook was going to be a standard application across all the devices, iOS 6 and above. We instantly saw, wow, if this is a standard app that you can't delete, that's a pretty cool thing. That's, a, that's 700 million devices that have a standard app. What we found is developers were really struggling to understand how to get content into Passbook. Now, I'm sure if, if, people, if people are using iOS, if you're coding, and you're using Swift or using Objective-C, you've probably been able to create a pass or Passbook, but you probably wouldn't have been able to do that at scale, and you probably wouldn't be able to maintain a server architecture that can support the types of requirements that businesses have. So we pivoted. We used our cloud-based technology capabilities. We used our lean process capabilities. We used our knowledge of how to navigate regulations from my banking experiences. And we pivoted to develop a solution that allowed developers easy access by leasing our service to use Passport. Great. Then we thought, well, that's done. Fantastic. That's all we needed to do. There's value in that. Developers will do that. Most of, the problem with most developers, they don't like paying for anything. <laughs> you like to get everything free. You go to Stack Overflow, right, and copy and paste that code here, and I'm not going to pay for anything. That's right, isn't it? Is there any developer that likes paying for something? No. If you're a developer, you're like, why would I pay for this? So, but what we found, I'll go the right way, what we found is actually businesses started to come to us and say, hey, I want to use your service. I want to use your system to solve my business problem. So the technical problem you've already solved of getting a pass and managing wallet content into Passbook, what I have is a business problem about how do I redeem and use that pass and integrate it into my current client relationship management or my loyalty campaigns? How do I make use of passbooks for marketing campaigns? How do I engage with my customers? The developers weren't thinking about that. They just said, I just want to put a pass to pass in a passbook. Business started to come to us and say, hey, can you help us with this? So again, we pivoted. We adjusted our course. Now, what we've recently done is, this was smaller businesses, innovative businesses like hair salons, um, coffee shops, small businesses that kind of were interested in technology, so kind of the leading edge technology guys in smaller businesses that can make decisions. And I thought, well, that's great, excellent. There's a lot of small businesses out there, and indeed, small businesses count for a lot of our revenue. But then we started to get enterprise clients coming to us. Now, these enterprise clients, you'd think, like a Cafe Pacific, would be able to solve these problems themselves, but they actually found they couldn't. You know, they're either for, what's the core value that Cafe Pacific provides to their customers? Safety. Safety, exactly. Airline tickets is just a way of getting on the plane, right? Safety, assurance, maybe service, some nice tasty food when you're on board. Yep. Why would they spend money investing in mobile tickets. So what we found is enterprises started to come to us to outsource a service to what we consider a center of excellence. Okay, so now the phase we're in, and, and this is a very important lesson from a startup culture, and I've talked to the guys at Uber, exactly the same thing. They solved the problem for their mates that wanted a car to rent in San Francisco. Some other people said, hey, I quite fancy that. Can you give me the number to dial? Uber originally was a telephone number. Yeah, before it was an app. Then it was some more mates in San Francisco. Oh, could you give me that telephone? And then, then it was like, oh, I can't be bothered to phone. Can I just log in somewhere? So journeys of startups are very similar. And the one key to success is the ability to pivot and not hang 
on your original business plan. And the book I would recommend reading is Business uh, Plan A to Z. And we're probably at about triple E now. <laughs> you know, you change your business plan on a regular basis. So we're solving an enterprise problem without forgetting all of these things as well. Obviously, we've got to maintain the capability, we're solving the problem for developers, we're solving the business problem for the small businesses, and we're equally now addressing enterprise businesses. Now, I don't know what the next pivot will be, but our likely pivot is to solve a society problem. Excuse my um, English, I should say, solve a society problem. So this is where society starts to say, hey, I want to get the most out of mobile wallet. So it doesn't just become an enterprise problem, it's society at large saying, I I'm, I'm getting bored of all this paper, um, you know, it's wasteful, the environmental effects, um, the, the lack of engagement, the lack of personalization, the lack of ability for someone to understand me, that's where we're likely to pivot. And we are starting to pivot a bit more like that. So key lesson for us in terms of the journey is, is pivoting. Next thing we learn is why now? Why is it important now? And it is a key question to ask yourself, particularly with technology companies. There's a lot of cool guys out there that are creating apps, and it might just not be the right time. This one, I think, is quite summarizing. It's inconceivable for people to not use mobile wallets five years from now. There are just too many good reasons for adoption, and technology has evolved at a tremendous rate. Chris Obama. So it's not even me saying this. This is not a biased statement. And this is prevalent across the whole world now. You know, if you'd ask people, when I first, oh, I'll tell you a story, when I first started HSBC.com, everyone said to me, this won't work. No one wants to use the internet for banking. Everyone wants to go and see their branch manager. How many in here use the internet bank? Is there anyone that doesn't use internet banking? Right? So the same is happening with mobile wallet. And it's happening at a far faster rate. The credit card adoption took about 50 years. When the first credit card came out, for now where we consider credit card to have mass adoption in most of other countries, it took about 50 years. Internet banking took about 10. Mobile wallet adoption has taken about five. Okay? And another thing is then having conviction to that vision and seeing the world where people are transacting using the mobile wallet. Because the one thing I face all the time is, oh, that will never catch on. That will never catch on. Same thing with internet banking. Oh, that'll never catch on. No one will use the internet. Now look at it, everyone's hands goes up. So the same thing is happening in mobile wallet. So this is the reason why now. The other thing is technology evolution has enabled us to take advantage of the change in the marketplace. So I think if you look at mobile wallet, probably the most famous one is Starbucks. Everyone got Starbucks app. Anyone got a Starbucks app? Some people do. It's maybe less common here in Hong Kong because it's pretty horrible to use, actually. But the, Star the Starbucks app, you know, this is where Starbucks were pretty cool at thinking about how do we use an application to store loyalty cards, collect points, allow transactions via the telephone. And, and they did a really good job. And actually, they're probably renowned for being the most innovative in the loyalty space through application. Great. Kudos to Starbucks. The biggest problem is, if I want to store my Costa coffee card in a Starbucks app, it's, it's not going to work, is it? Starbucks is not going to let you put your Costa coffee card in a Starbucks app. And at the same time, you've got people saying, look, I don't want a million apps just to store loyalty cards. So that's when the light bulb moment came on when Passport was announced. A native wallet, native means it's built into the operating system. It's open, which means you can store multiple brands, multiple cards, multiple forms of value, of digitized value, in a platform. And it has an open API that we can access and do what we want with, basically. There's requirements and constraints around design uh, and the way that we need to transact through that. And having a big relationship with Apple is important. But that was the moment when it next, it next evolved. So now people only need one app. And in the case of Apple, it's stored in the phone. You don't even need to download it. And I can now store my Starbucks card, my Costa Coffee card, my membership card, my Gold Tier Lane Crawford card, my gift card for Apple, etc., etc., etc. So this was the next evolution. Along comes Mr. Copycat. Um, some people know them as Samsung. Uh, and Samsung did the same thing. They come out with Samsung Wallet. Um, there's a, there are a lot of other wallets coming out, and we're, we're close to all of those guys. And then not only that, but this, this stuff was pretty cool because 
in addition to a leather wallet, it also forms the ability to have location services based off GPS. So if you've got a card in your, if you've got a card in your leather wallet, when you walk past Starbucks, what happens to your leather wallet? Absolutely zip. It doesn't suddenly jump out at you and say, "Hey, you got, a, you got your loyalty card." But with smartphone, because you've got location services built in and the capabilities within the smartphone, you can deliver a lock screen message. That's pretty cool. Trying to add value to consumer is convenience. Hey, remember you've got these points, or remember you've got a coupon that's about to expire. Right? So yeah, adding value. Many times I would get all these bloody coupons, and then I'd look at it. Oh, it's expired. I've missed it. Whereas with the smartphone, and using that location service and time-based service, you can deliver a lock screen message. Now, what came along that's even cooler is beacons. Has anyone heard of iBeacon? Some people have heard of iBeacon. It's been covered in the press quite a lot. Now, beacons are low-energy Bluetooth chips that emit a frequency. It's just like a lighthouse. And they say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But what it provides you is far greater level of pre precision around the location. So for those people that use Google Maps in, uh, with GPS across, um, across Hong Kong, sometimes you think, I'm not on that street, because it's not precise. Whereas with lo location services delivered through Bluetooth beacons, you can get very precise, down to the centimeter. So we equally pivoted at this stage. We initially were going to partner with hardware providers of to produce beacons and then we provide the software for the technologists here we were going to provide the SDK and the API to access that um, but what we found is that the hardware wasn't good enough and not meeting our clients demand so we ended up building hardware so we went to our good friends at Shenzhen and we built relationships before and said hey here's the design I want to design these beacons I want this capability we're going to do the firmware the software and now we make lots of money through selling beacons plus add value to clients through having that greater level of proximity services. So you know the video that you just saw there, the pop-ups on the screen don't just happen by GPS triggers, they happen by beacon triggers. So I could be walking to a shoe, and if I'm a particular Prada lover, and, I've, and they know my preferences, if I'm up there as Prada's doing a special, up pops that because the Prada shoe rack has a little beacon in it. Now a GPS you can't do that level of service. Okay, so beacons were another thing. Now lastly, what really propelled our business was Apple Pay. Has anyone heard of Apple Pay? Anyone not heard of Apple Pay? Yeah. So it's not available in Hong Kong, uh, but it is fast being deployed across Hong Kong and Asia and, and the UK and so on. So it will, it will be prevalent across the globe. And that allows you to store your credit card in the phone. And if you've got an iPhone 6 uh, or 6 Plus and the 6S is going to come out, use that to transact instead of getting out your wallet and swiping your credit card. Now, many people will say, well, what's the big deal? It's only a credit card. It only takes me two seconds. Those two seconds matter. Those two seconds matter. And so any point of waste coming from a lean background, as soon as you can remove two seconds, particularly if I'm carrying this in my hand, that is value for consumer, and it's certainly value for business. So Apple Pay says, now in Passbook, you can get your credit card so our message is to our clients, wouldn't you like your cards to also be alongside the credit card, as they are today in the leather wallet? Has anyone got any membership cards in their leather wallet or coupons or student union card? I bet you've got a student union card in your wallet, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All the time. You have to show it. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be great if you just have your student union card in here? Yeah. Why, why, why carry it in plastic? Why weigh your pockets down? I know, I know some ladies like big wallets. But why? Yeah? If you look at my wife's wallet, it's got about 300 cards in it. Oh, damn it, you're never going to remember all these cards, right? So this doesn't get thicker by the number of cards, and yeah, I can instantly add value. So that's been a big driver for our success, mobile wallet evolution. And it's important to keep an eye out on what's happening in technology to then be able to ride that technology wave. The other things that are changing is consumer preference. So. What we've seen, and this is Google research, that consumers nowadays, given the rise of the smartphone, <laughs> I love this one, learn about products and promotions. And people will ask, how would you like to learn about products or promotions? You'd think that they'd say, well, buy a sales associate. Some guy coming up to you, oh, can I tell you about this nice shirt? I can tell you. Yeah. 
Everyone wants to learn about it by your smartphone. That's why you're in the shop going, right, I'm going to that. I'm going to surf on my smartphone. I don't want some guy or girl to come up to me and annoy me. I'm going to do my own research. So actually, consumer preference, they like to be informed via their smartphone about products and promotions. The other thing that's really, really interesting is actually when you talk about location data, consumers are enjoying or preferring to trust their location with brands or favorite retailers as opposed to local information apps. And because the pass or the wallet content in the phone is from a brand, so if, let's say it's a Lane Crawford membership card, Lane Crawford is one of our clients, um, if it's a Lane Crawford membership card, then I'm going to trust my location data because I'm going to get something of value from Lane Crawford when they're doing a special or when Alexander Wang's latest halter neck is just about to appear in Lane Crawford, I'm going to get a nice bit of information when I walk past Lane Crawford. So this is really good data. And actually, this is probably two years old now and it's changed even more. But this, this number should be higher than 65%. The other, the other part of consumer preference is customers want personalization. They want to be treated like an individual. Yeah? It's so annoying when you, if I get an advert for a bra, it really is quite annoying. Yeah? So if I just do a mass email for something that is not appropriate for me and doesn't fit my preference, it's like, oh, spam, spam. So consumers want to get personalization, and where they currently are today is 18%. It's a minimal amount of personalization, which is again what mobile wallet capabilities and Passkit allow. And then lastly, we, I get millions of emails. I want to use Passport more, but I'm limited by what companies and apps support. And how many people have got anything in Passport? Apart from the card that you might download. You hardly anyone, right? Some people have hidden it in the back screen. I can't delete the bloody thing. So I'm going to just hide it somewhere, a bit like newsstand before magazines start to get produced. So we use this with our clients to say, get cut stuff into Passbook. Consumers are desperate to use applications, particularly ones you can't delete. And so when Mail App first came out, if no one sent any emails, the Mail App would be pretty rubbish, wouldn't it? If the SMS app comes out and no one sends any SMS messages, it would be pretty rubbish. So it's the same with Passport, it's just taking, there's a little bit more to the, the ecosystem than just email. So that's why Passport is the right time now, and the kind of way I see it is the perfect storm. So if you're approaching a technology, an entrepreneurial pursuit, or indeed want to talk more about opportunities with Passport, it's the market's ready, consumers are ready, technology's ready. So it's a really nice space to look at when you're starting to look at uh, from businesses. Then I guess you ultimately say, well, why Passkill? And this is probably the easiest way to summarize it. We provide a single bridge. So for the technologists and the developers in here, a single API and a lot of online tools to access all of the wallets. So I've only talked about Passport for now, just to give you a case of what we had to do to enable that. But we've done exactly the same to enable for all wallets and future wallets. This is all we do every day, is we're looking for what's the next one. Actually, we're working with Alibaba now about how do we get content into the Alipay world. There's a few tricks that we need to go through, because it's a Chinese-based company. There's lots of problem solving involved with that. But we provide the opportunity for brands or their partners, if they're working with an agency. Let's take Nike as an example. Ogilvy is a marketing agency that provides Nike with marketing services. So, Ogilvy uses our service to then provide Nike with the capability to access mobile wallet technology. So that's why Passkit. No one else in the world is currently offering the same compre comprehensive solution. There are companies in the US that can do the Passbook bit. There is one company in the US that can do the Google Wallet bit. But actually when you're talking to these customers, they don't want to just do one. They don't want to access one channel. They want to access all of these channels. So that's where we, we focus our attention. We do have some uh, computer sciences uh, graduates in here, right? So I don't want to get too techy, but these are the typical system diagrams that, that we saw. I mean, this is not a detailed system diagram, but this is the typical thing. So GAP, we'll put another P in there to try to anonymize it. You know, GAP has a number of systems that they use to issue loyalty cards, um, promotions, campaigns, marketing campaigns, etc., etc. They do that through another database. 
and then we integrate into their existing infrastructure. So the other beautiful thing we've built about Passkit is that we haven't just done we haven't just done Passkit on its own. It integrates into the broader ecosystem because the wallet is a big ecosystem. When you put your card into an ATM and the money comes out, there's a lot of things that are happening in the back end. Checking your balance, making sure that the cash is in the machine, making sure that it's got circled back to your balance so that when you've got the internet you can see that. Similarly with mobile wallet, there is a lot of system integration. So again, if you're fancy or your particular passion is about solving efficient system integration problems, this is a great ecosystem to look at. It's far broader than a single app. This is, this is a significant ecosystem. Okay, makes sense to what Parsky does. Um, you know, I guess in summary, we develop, deploy, promote, and market mobile wallet solutions. How do we do it? Uh, we retain our mobile wallet, our lead in the mobile wallet engagement by identifying and influencing new development and innovating to enable customers to benefit from the growth, glowing popularity of mobile commerce. This is really our reason of getting up in the morning. Why do we do it? I hope it's becoming quite self-apparent why we bother with this, because you know, we can create massive value for stakeholders in all of those chains while also reducing waste in the environment. And it's not just about paper and plastic, it's about that wasteful email that you don't open, that you don't take action on. So again, going back to lean principles, anything that doesn't lead to some action is a waste. Yeah, so we should be eliminating waste. We should certainly be eliminating the waste of paper. How, you know, you go up the escalator in Hong Kong, and how many people are throwing your coupons? It's like this. Like that, I get something shoved in my face, right? But what do I do? If it's really forced in me, I walk past and the nearest bin, it goes in. Maybe I take a cursory look. I think, oh, that's useful. Put it in my pocket. Then I forget about it. Waste. So one of our reasons that we get up in the morning is to remove late, uh, waste. What we promise is a partnership with Passkit. This is not just to not just to our clients and partners. This is to employees. You know, a partnership with Passkit is the most effective way to benefit from the coming surge of opportunities in mobile wallet. And every, I, I wish some of my staff could make it today. We had a very busy day. You know, this is really what everyone is focusing on. How do we ensure we can live up to our promise every day? Um, as I mentioned, just to give you a bit of an example, we are trusted by growing uh, brands across the world. Uh, you can see a couple of things you might recognize here. I've mentioned Lane Crawford, Heathrow Airport uses our service. Azul Airways in Brazil, Paramount Pictures, Zurich Airport, Airport Jetstar, uh, there's a big number of big clients. Actually, I get more excited by the small clients doing some exciting stuff, but they're less revenue earners. But we've got some big clients here uh, that add to our credibility and also starts to get us noticed as these startup companies. So as soon as you get big clients, and because our technology is sticky, it's very hard for Aeroflot to suddenly switch from Parsket to another provider because there isn't anyone that does the same thing. You know, this really helps my valuation, particularly when I go into series B discussions. Just a quick map, this is where we're used across the world, it's a little bit dated. Um, and we have partners, you know, the one thing that we tapped and pivoted is rather than trying to build a big sales force to go to all these direct clients, we actually started to partner up with marketing agencies, digital agencies, developers, people that had existing relationships to speed up the adoption of mobile wallet. And then for people that are studying business, here is our annualized net revenue. Um, I haven't shown you in the last three months because I haven't publicly uh, produced that yet, but it follows a si si the similar curve here. So you can kind of see these are the dark days. <laughs> Believe in the vision. Keep going. Tell my wife we will eventually pay the bills. I know we're going to downsize. Can we live in a caravan for a little bit? Yeah, that's, you know, these are the sort of, this is the sort of tough bit as an entrepreneur. But this is the exciting bit and having that vision of seeing where you can add value to the world. Then I just wanted to share a quote from one of, uh, she's an inter, ex-inter, studied at HKU, approached me proactively and wrote to me and said, I really want to work with you guys because I love what you're doing. I can feel that it will add value for me personally and I think I can add value to your company. And this is, this is what she said. I won't read it out. I'll let you just have a, have a quick look at that. So this was two years ago, when she, uh, two, three years ago she joined us.
I really like this one. There really isn't any stupid rules. I've worked for a bank for too long. <laughs> so I want to create a culture where, you know, they're not stupid rules. Of course there's rules, there's regulations, there's things we have to abide by. But if it's stupid, we, we've got the right to challenge it. What's that rule there for? Why can't I do this? They become more important as an entrepreneur, become more important as a creator. Here's our attributes, our, person, our brand attributes. Engagement, enablers, leaders, carrier grade, objective and dedicated. And again, for people that are in, in the technology space, you know, things like carrier grade um, and enterprise scale are really important to our clients. So to be successful in Passkey, you must be thinking about how do I create and enable engagement? How do, how do I leave this space, not just follow? How do I ensure that the products we build are carrier grade? That just because we're a 15 people company, we should be still building something that competes with an HSBC, which is a 248,000 employee company. Yep. So those, those are the sort of things. And then our personality attributes. Um, hopefully it comes across for me, you know, really passionate, and we are focused on this space. We're dedicated, we like to be adaptive, responsive, and I think we have a bit of fun. Now, it's hard work, but you've got to have fun. I'm sure we're all the same. You know, you, you've got to have a little bit of fun doing this stuff, because to stay at the office for many different hours, you want to make sure that you're enjoying yourself. Uh, we have a problem solving lean startup uh, culture. Do people study lean startups here at all during, you know, particularly in business studies and what that means? I, I guess underpinning it all is problem solving and a passion to solve problems efficiently. So we live and breathe passion around solving problems as they pull us and, and we're driven by demand based on that problem that we observe. So we've got a very problem solving culture. People that succeed at basket are our problem solvers. Hopefully, I'll, I will, I'm going to quickly show you a quick video if I have time, to show you what life at basket is like. to 
accept failure as a growth is really, really powerful. So if you don't want to ever fail, don't do a startup. If you don't ever want to fail, don't join a startup. Because actually you want to be encouraged to fail fast, learn, respond, grow and adapt. And I'll just la lastly end, and I know we'll go to questions, um, the opportunities that we have, and I'm so passionate about making things work uh, for, uh, for, for people here in Hong Kong, particularly graduates, uh, that have a passion for creating value and, and, making, and putting Pascal on the map even more, product management, business development, and then technology solutions. So there are opportunities available today, um, so I'm pleased to be able to share that with you. Um, and, and at least tell you a little bit about Passkit in the short time I have. No, I've overstayed, over, overstayed my, my timing. Um, but please do take notice of Passkit. And if it's not quite right for you, tell other people that you might be thinking, maybe this is the right thing for that person. Maybe that, that culture would fit. Maybe the opportunity to create value for the world is an exciting space for you. Thank you very much. Sure. I understand. Okay, so thank you, Paul, for your sharings.